me out today? Why do you have your hands up? Oh, Josh. Yeah. Well, I think there's a lot to learn, you know, from this last game. Um, I think number one, it's not just about playing hard. I think our guys played hard in a the game. They persevered in a game in tough circumstances. They overcame adversity. They showed great resiliency. But it's also about playing smart. You know, having good discipline to execute, focus on what's in front of you and do your job. Not only do your job, but do it fundamentally with the correct technique, whether it's hand placement for offensive linemen, whether it's footwork for defensive backs, whether it's running your feet on contact when you're tackling. All these things are basically, you know, fundamental things that, you know, people have to do every day in practice. I, so that there aren't bad habits that show up in the game. And I think that's a big lesson for us, you know, to learn. Second thing is, is what does it mean to be favored by 21 points? Well, there were two teams that I know of, maybe more, I don't know, that were favored by about the same amount that actually got beat. So I guess it doesn't mean anything. And that's why we have to play the games. So it's important for players to learn that they have to focus and prepare for every team and every opponent so that they can go out there and play to the best of their ability. Because sometimes even when you win, you can lose. So um, the challenge for us is from top to bottom in the organization is to hold each other accountable to make sure that we're putting the players in the best position to have a chance to be successful, but we're also teaching them fundamentally what they need to do to be able to have success. But then they have to be accountable to challenge themselves every day to be able to do it. So that's kind of some of the things that I think we can learn from a game like this. You know, we're really proud of Will Reichert, um, did a great job you know, making the winning kick, but also, you know, his performance all day long, whether it was kickoff, field goal, whatever, was pretty stellar. So we're glad that he's SEC Player of the Week. So, you know, ULM, Terry Bowden, you know, this is a well-coached team. I think they're a lot better this year than they were a year ago. Uh, I see significant improvement on both sides of the ball. Uh, they have a good little quarterback who is athletic, can make plays, is a good passer. And, you know, they're playing, you know, good fundamental football on both sides of the ball. We certainly have respect for these guys. You know, I don't forget things. So, you know, I remember when these guys beat us. So I know that our players won't remember that because, you know, history sometimes is not that important. And they were probably only, what would you say, five, six years old, you know, when that happened. But kind of is is what it is after the the 15 penalties in the first three quarters what are the points of emphasis going to be this week to clean it up and what can you guys replicate from the fourth quarter when you didn't have any what did i just say i repeat myself discipline to execute play smart make good choices and decisions that's what we'll do to we have officials out there every day um, so we get a penalty report every day. Every player is confronted with you made these penalties, whether it was offsides, pass interference, illegal motion on offense, whatever the penalty is. And those th things are always emphasized. So it's not like this is, you know, sort of a resurrection of, wow, we need to start doing something about this. We've been doing it. Players need to make choices to have the discipline in the game I, that it doesn't do any good to try to create an advantage for yourself because you're not above the law. So you got to make good choices and decisions. But that's the discipline that I've been talking about since I've been standing up here is exactly what I'm talking about. What did you see on film from the receivers and their ability to get open downfield in those first three quarters? We 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 didn't play fast and do as good a job uh, in terms of, 
But I do think that in the fourth quarter, we sort of came of age a little bit, played faster, made plays, uh, spread them out a little bit more, um, did a little better job, you know, giving them a chance, and they took advantage of it. So, um, you know, I, 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 I saw some, you know, maturation, you know, in the fourth quarter and those guys playing with confidence and making plays. You mentioned that 2007 game against ULM. Do you still kind of use that as a teaching tool to try to get a point across to the players sometimes? Well, you know, history doesn't seem to be on the forefront sometimes. So, um, and I do think that, you know, players relate better to things that affect them which most of them don't remember those types of things uh i think you know sometimes what happens currently like what happened last week to a couple teams you know maybe something that they can identify with and relate to better what did you see from the texas secondary and how they played y'all in coverage to try to get the receivers contained they didn't do really they did exactly what we expected them to do. They played the coverages that we expected them to play. They didn't, wasn't like we were surprised by anything. I don't think we did a very good job of taking advantage of it. You know, that, that starts with me and us, you know, as coaches, as well as not executing as well as we need to and playing as fast as well as we need to. And, you know, in some cases, beat man to man coverage and, you know, being able to make some explosive plays, given the quarterback. Uh, a little cleaner pocket sometimes um, to be able to make plays down the field. So all these things sort of contribute to um, doing a little bit better job of being more efficient in the passing game. Uh, on Saturday, we didn't get a chance to ask you about the non-safety targeting call with Bryce in the end zone. Now you have a couple of days to review it. Kind of, What do you make of that play and how was it explained to you on Saturday by the officials? Um, well, first of all, the way they called the play, roughing the quarterback with targeting, they can't review roughing the quarterback. It's not a reviewable, but they did. So they not only took off the targeting, which there wasn't any targeting, um, Bryce was not down when he threw the ball. One of their players actually touched the ball, so that, that didn't make it. Uh, intentional grounding and we did have a player in the vicinity Jason McClellan was in the vicinity so it never got explained really well but I'm giving you the facts so now maybe it just got announced wrong you know that it's rough in the passer with targeting they can review targeting, but not rough in the passer. So I, I don't know what happened with all of that. Kind of is what it is. But I'm not complaining about it. I'm not criticizing anyone. I'm just saying, you asked me what happened, how I got explained to me. That's basically what got explained to me. Coach, you mentioned Eli Ricks' length and his ability to, to pick things up defensively, but where have you seen him start to get more comfortable in wanting to make an impact? Well, I, I think that, um, you know, we go a lot by how players practice, and if players have a good week of practice, some think they're ready to play, and, you know, they'll go out there and be able to do their job. And I think the other players that they play with also gain confidence in them knowing what they're supposed to do in terms of how focused they are and practicing and getting the game plan right and all that. And we just want to continue to do a good job with him and all the other players uh, that we have on our team to get them ready to play so that they're confident and we're confident that they go in the game, they're going to create value for themselves. Hi, Coach. So I know some coaches out there like to see, you know, a little bit of easier competition as you get your guys comfortable and understand the team a little bit better. But what can you say is the benefit of dealing with the adversity that you guys dealt with playing Texas in the second week and then overcoming it? Well, I think there's a tremendous benefit, you know, for players. First of all, playing on the road uh, and what 
is the typical SEC environment when you play on the road, uh, playing a team that is the caliber of most of the teams that will play in the SEC. Um, so I think there's a huge benefit, you know, in that. And the fact that there's a lot of the lessons that I've already talked about that we can learn, you know, from this experience in terms of staying focused on what's in front of you all right, when you play on the road and how difficult it is to play well on the road and being able to overcome those circumstances and still execute uh, and play smart in a more positive way for every play in a game for 60 minutes in a game, which, you know, we, we were kind of a little bit up and down, back and forth with that, made, you know, more mental errors than what we'll be able to get away with in the future. Wanted to ask you about Terry on Arnold and just, you know, having him come off the bench and really just played a pretty good game in the secondary, especially against Xavier Worthy. All right. Well, you know, we got a lot of confidence in Terry on, um, but again, we have a lot of competition at that position and guys need to go out there each and every day and, and play well in practice. Um, I get, I get a little bit frustrated sometimes, you know, when guys don't do things the way they need to do them in practice. And they're not creating the right habits because especially in the secondary, there there is nobody behind you. You know, if the linebacker misses a tackle, the safety makes the tackle. If the safety misses the tackle, nobody misses, not, there's nobody there. If the corner misses the tackle, there's nobody left. So um, the, these things are critical to us having success uh, defensively. We gave up too many explosive plays in this game. We had too many mental errors. Doesn't have anything to do with Terry on Arnold, but I'm just saying that as a whole, you know, we got to get better at that at part of what we do. You have two new starters on the left side of the offensive line. I just wanted to know what you've seen from them through the first two weeks. Two new starters on the left side of the line. Um, yeah, Davian and Cohen started last year. If I. Yeah. But he doesn't, he's played half the game, you know. Um, so, look, I think the offensive line as a whole um, has to play a little bit more physical. We got to get better movement. We got to have better diversity in the running game. Um, we got to be able to execute more consistently. Fundamental techniques. I have total confidence and ability on every guy that plays up there. Um, I just think that. We just need to get a little bit more consistent and a little more physical in how we play um, so that we can control the line of scrimmage better, which I don't think we control the line of scrimmage as well as we need to in this game. Coach, just want to ask you about mental toughness. Is that something that players just have, or how difficult is it to coach up mental toughness? Um, I think you get mental toughness because things are hard. You know, and you got to embrace hard. I think that's true in your life. I think it's true in football. You know, tough times make hard people. Easy times make soft people. It's no different in football. You know, if it's hard, you got to embrace hard. Uh, I, I have no problem with our players and how they embraced hard in this game. They showed tremendous mental toughness and resiliency to play through, you know, what they had to play through to uh, win the game. We didn't execute like we wanted to, but you can't fault the mental toughness. It was tough circumstances, tough crowd, very hot. Um, you know, we got guys getting cramps and not able to finish the game in some cases. So, um, you know, I, I don't question the mental toughness. Now, you ask me, can you develop that? I think you develop it because people are in difficult circumstances and they learn how to overcome them. I don't think you can develop it if you don't have di di difficult circumstances because you've got to learn how to overcome things that are hard. We saw Bradshaw have a really good game on the ground as well as in the passing game. We saw Jameer give step as a receiver. So what do you see from the offensive versatility of this team, especially at Texas? Well, I, I, look, we, we've got enough good players, I think, Good players have to make good choices and decisions about how they do their job, the discipline that they play with. And everybody can't have one my bad. Everybody can't have one loaf. You know, we run an RPO and the, and the receiver runs the route half speed. 
quarterback is stuck. He didn't know what to do. All right, so all these things are correctable, but all these things need to be fixed, and we need to do these things on a more consistent basis, and the players have to respect those facts in terms of respecting what it takes to win. And if they're willing to do that, we'll get better and they'll get better and they'll create more value for themselves and we'll have a better team. But I do think we need to do that. All right. Thank you.